Young Thug, but I don't she don't know, know who Young Thug is. I, I know who Young Thug is so, so in Mumble, terms of fashion, but I don't yeah. know any of the songs. The 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 words are just kind of like implied. It's mm. like really, it's like it's like almost like you know how sometimes artists go in the studio to figure out the words, like the freestyle of verse. Yes. And they'll like leave a, a reference with just like the cadence and with like with the, the consonants syllables. and some yeah. of the vowels. And they mumble rappers, they just leave that. That's the whole song. God bless everyone. <laughs> but I I need to understand what you're saying. I, f- I, I feel personally, it. you know, and it, yeah. I feel like it's so old school. Like I don't, I do not begrudge anybody's path in the music industry. Yeah, yeah. It's a horrible industry, and if you are able to make it and feed your family, it's the Almanac of Rap Show. I got opinions and they all factual. No news, just information that you won't be able to use unless you're at a dinner party trying to impress who's in attendance with endless tidbits of nonsense. We're gonna have a good time, I promise. You two rabbit holes, ready deep dives, pulling out old interviews from the archives. Styles, fads, trends, all of that. It's the almanac of rap. Welcome to the Almanac of Rap. The show that wonders if mumble rapping is the same thing as scatting. I'm your host, Don Will, and today's episode is all about OGs with new artist energy. Our guest, none other than Layla Hathaway. Layla's a Grammy award-winning singer, artist, writer, and producer, and we have a really fun conversation about staying fresh and inspired. We'll get into that in a second, but first, I gotta kick the ballistics. Hip hop is officially old enough to join AARP now. And it's genuinely crazy to remember a time when rap was just considered to be a fad. Back then, there was a very finite number of rap releases, which meant you had way more time to sit with a challenging album before completely writing it off. You also had to travel to a physical location to get the music, then spend money on each individual release. That is, unless you could catch a dub of a cassette tape from a friend, you know what I'm saying? But All of this made the listening experience far more memorable. And if you ask me, this might be a controversial take, but I don't care. Everything now is far too convenient, everything. But that's a whole other conversation. Fast forward to now, and there's no shortage of new music to listen to. So much of it, in fact, that it can be kind of confusing to remember what releases have come and gone over the last few weeks. Now as a DJ, I gotta keep track of what drops for work, but I'm not gonna lie to y'all. It's very confusing. It's a lot to keep track of for me, so I can only imagine how it must feel to be the average listener. Now there's no exact science to it, but I've been trying to keep tabs on what's been dropping, and there's an abundance of great new music that are coming from our OGs. Artists like LL Cool J, who's dropping The Force, which is an album fully produced by Q-Tip. I hit up Tip, it weighed on me. Yo, Tip, what's up? He said, yo, what's up, big bro? I'm like, yo, I wanna do an album, man. He said, well, Okay, really? What, what kind of album you want to do? I said, I want to do the blackest pickle juice, pimento and the potato salad, fried okra, damn black eyed peas, smoked neck bone, turkey. Just the, I want to go there and go crazy. He like, yeah? I'm like, yeah. He said, say less. Then you got Common and Pete Rock. They teamed up for the auditorium volume one, which means that volume two is on the way. Some black thought said to me one day, I was um, like telling him I was stuck, man. Like I ain't been really writing, blah, blah, blah. He was like, nigga, you done earned yours in this, just rap. Yeah. Just rap. Yeah. And I was like, damn, it, it sounded so simple, but it meant a lot because it made me think about, man, I like to rap. Even the God Rock Kim has a new album out called The Gods Connect Rebirth that he also does production on as well. Yeah. Like this, this this album right here, like, you know, like like we were speaking on, I've been producing for a long time. So this was a chance for me to produce some tracks and, you know, get my feet wet again and let the world know that, that I do that. And artists like Ghostface Killer, Slum Village, and The Dog Pound all have dropped extremely impressive releases. Sidebar. If you need help keeping track of what dropped, feel free to subscribe to the weekly Substack that I do. It's all about new music releases. I'll leave a link to that in the show description. Now, I know that a while back, Andre got the internet in a tizzy when he said that he feels like he doesn't have anything to rap about in his 40s, which I will not attack him for because that man is allowed to feel the way he feels. But there are so many other seasoned artists raising the bar, 
that I think there's honestly ample space for a flute solo album. By the way, I absolutely don't think Andre is done rapping. Of course I have things to say now, but if I can't say them in a fresh, innovative way, like if I feel like I'm just hanging on to something, a same flow that I used to do, or then it's, not, uh, it's not enough for me. So I can't talk for another rapper about what they doing. Um, I just say, man, go for it. In a nutshell, there are a lot of OGs with new artist energy, and it's very inspiring to see this kind of invigoration from some of the craft's premier artists. This trend extends to artists outside of the genre as well, like Layla Hathaway, who just dropped an excellent album titled Vanta Black. Now I know she's not a rapper, but the album has some real rap energy to it, so I had to ask her about it. I also tried to get her to answer a chaotic question that she expertly diffused. We got the big three in rap. Who, who, who would be the, the big three? With, who would the other two? He's trying to start some shit. He's trying to start a little <laughs> I, I I was like I was like it would definitely be Anita. Anita would be in there with you. Why? Cause she's a powerhouse. In terms of. In terms of, of voicing, in terms of like the way she can like manipulate her voice. Just the way that, just how she sounds. Yes, I mean it's, it's a commanding. The, voice. the thing with singers is, and this is this is a thing. There, it is hard. You, it's hard to compartmentalize like a big three. Even okay. for people that have a big three. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, what if you had Shaka and Gladys and Patty? Big three. Right? Big three. And there's there's so many other three. What there's if you so had many. Luther Vandross and and Nat King Cole and Donny Hathaway? Three more. It's I big mean six. There's, there's 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 big thousands, which big is thousands. which is great. Okay. Big thousands. Thank you for being so diplomatic yes, in that that's answer. how I do it. I f with that. With that. There you go. <laughs> well, I will say it's big me right now at this table because I we got it. fucking Layla Hathaway. Thank you, know? you so much. All right. So since you threw water on that question, I just want to <laughs> say. <laughs> ah, she don't want that smoke. What a professional. This clip was part of a longer conversation with Layla about hip hop samples, vocal colors, vocal signatures, and a whole bunch of other stuff. As a matter of fact, let's jump into it right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Almanac of Rap. Today, I have a guest that is a five-time Grammy Award-winning doctor of music at Berkeley oh, yeah. who can sing in chords. If you don't know what that is, that's hitting multiple notes at once. She's also the daughter of Donny Hathaway. Ladies and gentlemen, none other than Layla Hathaway. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to the show. How's your day going? My day's going great. Thank you. I'm happy you're here. Yeah. All glad right. to be here. Glad for the snacks. God bless you. They got a really good snack closet. I appreciate that. To make sure you take some on the way out. I, I will. Stuff you think your... I won't? <laughs> I will. I will. Based on the conversation we had about candy, I'm pretty sure you're going to yeah. raid the closet again. There's no candy in your, in your snack closet, which I sort of appreciate. There is Starburst. I saw those. Are they all pink? Most of them are pink. All right, we can talk about it. I didn't, I didn't shop for the candy, so. I understand. You know, got to take that up with management. Understood. <laughs> I got to start this thing off by saying you're an absolute musical royalty. Thank you. You come from a family that is imprinted in music in general. Everyone from Jay-Z to Scarface has sampled your father's music. Yeah. My question is, what are some of your favorite songs that have sampled his music? I love the Jay one because it, it's, it's about a father talking to his daughter. I really mm. love that. I don't yeah. know if that was intentional on his part, but that spoke to me in a way, obviously. Um, I love the ghetto sample. The ghetto. I, I mean, I hear my dad, yesterday I was in the hotel lobby, or the day before yesterday, and I heard my father's hands, which I can hear almost immediately. And it was on, I can't remember the girl's name, but she had sampled Be Real Black for me. Be real black for me. Mm, so I yeah. hear him all the time. And it's amazing. Like, for an artist that's been gone 45 years, to still be being sampled now is, is amazing. Still be sampled. Like, whenever I think of uh, Be Real Black for me, I think about um, Scarface, My Block. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think about M.O.P. Mm-hmm. The, um... That joint, it's the world famous MOP fire, that shit. Yeah. But yeah, like it's so many, so many songs that just 
have that DNA in it. Mm -hmm. It's just, I love to see the music traveling like that. Me too. It just, it just brings it forward. It keeps, you know, we always, I think as a culture have just one foot here. So yeah. we remember, or at least we should. We should. And then we're trying to push the culture forward. How do you think, do you think he would enjoy being sampled and being so revered? You know, by? that's a hard, that's a hard, that's a hard one. I don't know. I, I think the being so revered part, yeah. I don't know about the sampling part. I don't really know. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, for a long time, they were tupac him every year. Right. So they were coming out with new stuff, and we would be like, oh, you said there was nothing in the vault. Where is this vault? Where, how can we get in the vault? But I think that um, any artist, to see your music live, to watch it live and go to new generations and for us to record this Christmas, for me to get on that with him and then take it to yet new generations that, that think it's a Chris Brown song. You know what I mean? For him to have taken it to that many people, you know what I mean, is, is incredible. Yeah, this Christmas is one of those songs that I want to play it in July. Yeah, it's like, It good. don't even matter what it's month It's a good it song. It's just a good song. It's a good song. Yeah. But so the legacy of being sampled continues on because yeah. you're also like you, you get sampled as well. Like you were a part of Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly album yes. as a vocalist, but you were also sampled on the track Mama. Mm -hmm. Take a glimpse of your family ancestor, make a new list. Um, how did it feel to, you know, it's get incredible. that request? It's incredible. That's like one of my favorite records of all time, probably. And to use my whole song yeah. is incredible. To hear it flipped is incredible. To then be able to go in and add to it to make it even newer was an incredible experience for me. Oh wait, so you added to the I like, did after oh shit, really? Yeah. I had I did not know that. This so is... they took the track and they flipped the track and then um Terrace called me one night and said, Hey, can you can you come in? And I just went in and I sang on complexion and uh, yeah. you know, Black of the Berry. Black of the Berry. The sweet of the and I, I said, let me give you just some pieces so you have new stuff to bounce off of. So a lot of those ad-libs for Kendrick's record are newer ad-libs. I did not know that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so um, you and Terrace are pretty, like y'all work, yeah. work pretty closely. Terrace is super dope. He is. And it's, it's wild that that part of your career, like the, the earlier stuff, is making its way back to now and you're making music that still sounds super fresh. Thank you. You know, like you're making music that sounds like like you're just in, re, you're just invigorated at all times. I'm I I hardly ever feel jaded in terms of music. I'm always excited about what's happening. I'm always excited to create. I'm always excited to have musical conversations with people. So it never gets old for me. You could do it forever. It just will never get old. Yeah, I, I listened to an interview and you were saying something about people sometimes call you in for sessions and they'll ask you to sing like one pass and that's it. And you're like, but that's not where the, the magic is like the fourth or <laughs> fifth take. No, the magic is wherever you find it. Okay. I really, I would like to in some cases stretch. Yeah. But I do, I do love the expression of the first or second or third take because that's what you meant. Yeah. You can go in and fix it and tweak it, but I like, I like the idea of understanding what the story is and going in and telling a story. And I was just speaking with someone about, you know, a first or a second take, and, and he was saying, That's, that is so great that you can, you sing it all at one time. And I thought, well, what, who's not singing it all at one time? <laughs> but people, but people are not. Yeah. So um, that's important for me at this level, you should be able to sing a song. Yeah, because like, you know, you know your instrument, and your instrument is like whole with you. And some people are still figuring things out. Some people understood. are, yeah. Understood, but that is, I mean, there are some things at the rudimentary level of what you do. You, sh you have to be able to do what you do. Right. All at the same time, that's all. So, continuing with the sample conversation questions. Yeah. Has there ever been a sample request that you've had to be like, nah, you can't Absolutely. Use that? I don't, don't, you don't have to say who, but like, I, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. <laughs> what? there have been things that, you know, come across our desk and I'll, you know, play for my mom and she'll say, oh, yeah, I don't but, know. Cause some, you know, a lot of artists have stipulations with people using their music. So yeah. like sometimes it's like profanity, sometimes it's subject yeah. matter, sometimes it's 
It could be anything. I don't think I don't think it's a profanity thing or or a, or a. For me personally, it's not a profanity thing or a subject matter thing so much. I think it's a a thing of advancing the music, advancing, mm. taking the ball down the field. If it's an artist that we like, I think that it works. Right. You know what I mean? I don't. I try not to. Um, Say I don't like this song, and so therefore you cannot. I don't think that's yeah. That's not the right way. To music do it. is uh is, is it subjective or objective? I get it. Confused. Subjective. Subjective. Yeah, it's all so, it's all how you feel it. And, yeah. And I want as many people as possible to know who Donny Hathaway is, and so all of those records, all of the people from disparate parts of the industry and the world that come and say, oh, we want to sample this for that. I think that's fine. You know, pay your money and show everyone your music. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right, so moving on to another section. I've heard you say in interviews that um, you describe characteris characteristics of voices as colors. Yeah, sound, sound in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this like, when you say that, do you mean like in a synesthesia way, like, synesthesia way, like you see yeah, color? definitely. Oh, wow. Definitely. I definitely have synesthesia. But I also feel like, I feel like most people have some sort of synesthesia, in, in the, at least in the beginning of your life. Yeah. Because the way you learn to talk is you listen to people talking and then you mimic what you hear. So there's a certain, in my mind, there's a certain quality of words and colors that go together mm -hmm. or sounds or tastes or shapes. And I think that we unlearn that as we grow up. Right, because you learn you learn the definitions of words, and you learn all this other stuff yeah. that kind of takes you away from like the pure intention of like the sound of the word being yeah. said to you. Like there's some, some some parts of communication where like if you don't understand what I'm saying to you, you can know by the tone of my voice I'm angry, or I'm right. happy, or I'm whatever. Or the look in my eyes. Right. Exactly. Know? Yeah. It's all it's all very. Um, if you ask a kid listening to music, like, well, what color do you think this would be? Chances are they, they have something in mind. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we get so cerebral and yeah. you know what I mean? It's just, it's impossible to see music. And a lot of people really do see music. You ever hear something and say, oh, that should be in a movie. Yep. That's, you're, really, you're really perceiving the color or flavor of a thing. It's like a flower opening up for you. So let's get a little more cerebral. Uh-oh. Uh, what color would you say your voice is today? Today? I, kind of, I would think the color changes day yeah, to day, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But it has a it has a base a base kind of color. Today I'm in the brown blues. Today, it's just um, it's just kind of a regular fair to midland. I had to sing this morning, so oh. it's it's up a little bit in the blues. But it's a you know kind of a chocolate color today. All right, what color would my voice be? You got to keep in mind allergies have been hit me hard. Uh uh. -uh. So this not, is not the allergy the colors. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would put you in the blue family. Kind of, yeah. you have a sort of powdery, rounded, you know, mellifluous. I know a lot of words. Oh my God. A lot of That's words. a great word. No, mellifluous? A of, a mellifluous. Can I guess what that means? Yeah. It means like, sort of like airy. It, in actually, a it actually just means beautiful sounding. Oh wow. I'm putting yeah. this in my resume. Yes. Put it put down. It Write resume. it down. Google it. You said you said round mellifluous. Yeah. All right, but I'll take it. Your tone it. is soft it. and powdery, like if someone shook a little baby powder on it, you know. Okay, so now that we've read our colors, with this in mind, I got a couple more rappers that I want you to like give me the color of their. I voice. hope I know who they are. You know who they are because okay. I would say seventy percent of them are on your album. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So okay, the first rapper is Fonte, oh. but when he's singing. Fonte, when he's singing, that's interesting. I'm gonna put him at a, a, a green, but mm. not like a Kelly green, like a dark green. I love Fonte's singing voice. Yes. I really love it. I was really a foreign exchange fan. I hope they do another record. But I really love the, the timbre of his voice yeah. a lot. It's good. Like I actually asked him, like I was like, hey man, can you teach me how to sing? Yeah, what did <laughs> he say? He, he was like, I'll show you. He, t he told me to listen to, um, Three people, and I forgot who the people were. So oh. that should. You'll never you. learn like that. I'll never learn like that. It'll come up. It'll come up. I'll remember it after this conversation. All right, the next one, Rhapsody, but on the intro to your album. Mm. 
I'm going to give her like a yellow orange. I think yellow is her color right now, yeah. but I really feel like there's something in her voice that is the reason I really love her is because there is an aggression, but not a it there is a it's a calm laid back aggression. I don't know how to put it any other way than that. It commands attention. Yeah. It's like a Defcon 3 voice to me. It's like a sort of urgency to it. There is an urgency to it, but I'm not I'm not not calm listening to it. Right. You know. Like it's it's still sort of soothing in it's a way. It's maternal. You know how like your mother's telling you something you need to do yeah. or else it's going to be trouble. I got that call about a week ago. Uh -huh. I know exactly what that what that tone is. Uh, all right. The next one is common but on the song The Light. Oh. You know, I'm going to give him also like a greenish, but I would put with him more of a blue. There's something about Common's voice. Like if Common can sing, that is trouble. I think yeah. his voice is very round and I, here's, don't tell anyone I said this. Cut the cameras off. When I'm listening to him a lot of times, it, you can taste almonds. <laughs> I don't know what that is. There's something round. Did you but just call oblong. common trail mix? No, there's not a Granola? mix. It's just almonds. It's just almonds. Okay. It's just almonds. Is it I the chocolate, know. dark chocolate no, almonds, or it's just, just raw? Just regular, regular almonds. Just regular. <laughs> just a regular old almond. But there's something about the uh, shape of the sound of his voice that is almond shaped. I don't know. Now he has an album coming out with Pete Rock, so I'm just gonna be I'm excited. listening to all. We're hearing almonds the whole time now. Yeah. Thanks to I you. Know. Sorry. All right, we got three more. Next one, MC Light, but on paper thin. Mm. When you say you love me, it yeah. doesn't matter. Mm. That, you know what, I don't, let me think. It's hard to assign a color to Light's voice, and I don't know why in this moment. Um, she also has that kind of forward. Yeah. It's a passive forward, but it's different than raps, obviously. I don't know what color. Light's voice is. Like, I think that her voice is so, like, hearing her on the Grammys as the voice of God. Every, the voice everywhere. Yeah, the voice everywhere. Like, yeah. she almost is just ubiquitous. Like, she's the mm -hmm. voice in my mind at, yeah. at half of the time. Like, yeah. when I'm doing something, it's like, and now we're going to the fruit aisle. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting is when Warren Campbell told me that he said, you know, let's, let's, let's ask Light to do this feature on your record, because I think your two voices are so cool. There's a coolness to your yeah. voice and... Um, a smoothness to both of your voices. And I don't know that I had ever perceived her voice like that. I don't know, um, you know, I was, I guess I'm listening to Roughneck, I don't know. Right. But there's a, an aggression that didn't, I hear the smoothness to it now and I see, as soon as she got in the booth, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah, like you, you, there's a similar quality there. Yeah, I just hadn't, I hadn't thought about it before. And I think it only came because she aged into her, like her, her aging into her voice kind of gave it that quality. Yeah, it has evolved. I mean, it's still the same, but it's, I'm, I'm really excited to hear her record and see where yeah. she's going. Now. I'm excited about her record yeah. too. That, that's gonna be, a, that's gonna be a banger. All right, two more. It's the penultimate. That's a word for you. Yeah, I like the, it. The penultimate. Kendrick Lamar on the song Mama. Oh, he's my fave, probably. Um, his voice is interesting because he has a lot of different colors. He has a lot of yeah. different voices, a lot of different registers that he plays with, which is part of the reason why I love him, is his, his voice, it, he's like a singer, but he's also, in a lot of ways, like a drummer. He's, uh, he's very, he can change up. Um, it's super percussive, his, yeah. his style. Yeah. Just, the, just the way he can, in the way that dancers are like drummers and drummers are like dancers. Right. You know, he's, he's kind of all over the place. I don't, it would be hard to assign a color to his voice, but ultimately his voice is a super, super rich um, chocolate brown to me. The whole of it, it starts there and then it goes all these different places and um, the way he sings melody is interesting to me for someone who's not a singer. Yeah, like he, sing, he sings melody in the same way that like when you hear him sing, you kind of feel like you can sing it too. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it really, is, it makes his voice relatable in a way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Last one. This is the last one. And this is a curveball. Ever? 
Last one ever. Oh, no. That <laughs> happened so fast. This is a curveball, but Young Thug on the song Lifestyle. <laughs> Wait. Do I <laughs> know this song? It's the one, did a lot of shit just to live this here lifestyle. I don't know that song. Okay, well. I'm sorry. It's, it is, it's, <laughs> that, that color would be, this is a, this is a joke from earlier, That's, that would be white, the mystery color. Oh, well, there you have it. <laughs> I just, I'm not hip. Okay. Will you play it for me? I'll play it for you. Okay. I'll play it after this. Okay. I did a lot of shit just to live this here lifestyle. Because that, that was the thing about the album, is it made me wonder about, like, what, what artists are like, like, oh, this is dope. Let me yeah. let me reach out to them. Or like, oh, this is dope. How did, who's who's mixing that? Like, yeah. it, it made me wonder. Like, what's your what's in I'm your Spotify? I'm listening to your Cat Pack. I told you about Cat shouts Pack. To, shouts to Amber. Yeah, I love Amber the Cat and Pack. Phil. I don't know Phil, but I know Phil is dope. Yeah, you you gotta check out Phil Boudreaux. He has his own album that came out during the quarantine that he made just basically for himself and his friends. But it's out there and it has a visual album that's attached to it. Okay, I love really the beautiful album. work. And he is the person that mixed and mastered my whole album, who really understands oh, wow. the sonics. Yeah, so that's what, okay. You have to. You have to, I'll give you. I'll I'll make you a required listening list. Okay, I would um, love it. Yeah. yeah, Willow's album I'm in love with. Great album. So much of it. Then she, her first single was Big Feelings. That's the song I was trying to think of. Yeah. Big, like that, her album turned, like, it, I was like, what? It's, it's a great album. It's, yeah. It, were you, you said you were kind of like pleasantly surprised at what you heard. I was. Well, I'm surprised that it's in the jazz category. It's in the jazz category? I think so. It's, there are some serious elements of music on that record, but it feels like, you know, this is the world we live in. If if Taylor Swift recorded all those songs, they yeah. would be they would be pop songs. I'm just guessing it's because some songs have like mixed time signatures and shit. They're like, yeah. we don't know where to put this. Yeah. Throw it over the jazz. But I'm sure yeah. all the other girls could do that. We we yeah. don't we don't have that luxury. But it it's a phenomenal record. No matter and I think it doesn't have a genre, really. Yeah. Um I'm listening to some Tyler the Creator records. I'm really angling to try to work with him before the end. I think that, that that's like a given in my mind. I would mind. really like to do that. And three years ago I said that and I thought, well, that would never Wait, happen. Wait, three years ago? What what album, I'm trying to think of what was, that was. I just, I just love his body of work yeah. and watching him do the work. And I really, he's somebody I just really want to work with. He's a dude who, like, if you, if you don't get deep into his world, you'll kind of miss what's laying under yeah. it. So like seeing him I agree. at the piano and seeing him like his understanding he's, of chords. He's a musician. He's a full service uh -huh. musician. He's amazing. Yeah. Which makes me like, now I want to hear you work with him. Uh, tell him. Tyler. She's right here. She wants to work with you. Look at that face. How could you, how could you just sit on this request, Tyler? Yeah. Layla. I definitely, I definitely would like to see what we can, what we can do. I want to yeah. work with Kendrick again because I, I just find him phenomenal. He just keeps growing in my mind. Um, Pharrell called me the other day to do something and I couldn't make it and I was so mad. Um, but I want to work with him again too. Yeah, I, I almost had the, the quick response, but I had to like <laughs> quick. Just, I had to s swallow it. Holy shit. Yeah, I would like. Have to you do ever that worked again. with Pharrell? Before? I have. I did a. a a song on the Hidden Figures soundtrack okay. with him and did a show with him in Canada or something. He's awesome. His, he's, he's like, I draw parallels to him in a weird way, like with Stevie Wonder, mm -hmm. like just like the, the vastness you. of his work yeah. and like the way he can just work with a bunch of people. Yeah. yeah. I kind of draw a parallel with him and someone like Arif Mardin because he's such a, he's such a consummate producer. He really knows how to eke the sound out of an artist, but also leave his indelible yeah. thumbprint on it as well, you know. Arif has to go on this required listening list because this is the first time I've ever heard his name. Arif Mardin is a producer from the 60s and 70s. Okay. And he is gone. He is uh, one of the architects of the sound at Atlantic Records at that time. Oh, yeah. so what would be like a... Uh, Donny Hathaway. Aretha Franklin. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, I mean, okay, yeah. Uh, Jerry a Wexler, Arif Mardin, all of those producers that um, that that allowed artists to just go in the studio and create. Yeah. Arif Mardin produced the Shaka Khan album. I think it's just called Shaka Khan that has the bebop medley on it that oh. I was obsessed with 
as a kid. The um the yeah the yes the memories yes yes yeah, yes yeah. yes. So all of that stuff is Arif, but he was able to leave his footprint leave his footprint on that record, but let Shaka just stretch out. You know that's an incredible like Shaka's records are incredible in general, but Absolutely. that record yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So, and you said something interesting. You said Willow's album is genreless. Yeah. And I'm, I don't really, I think, I know genre is just some made up shit. It doesn't yeah. really exist. So my question for you, because I, I feel like you in a way are genreless too, because I feel like you can play in so many worlds yeah. that nothing, no, no one word can contain you. That is true. But if we had to contain you with one word. What but would, if you had to do if it, you had what, to would do it, it what, what would it be? What would you make, what, what would your genre be? Um, I would say it's soul music. If soul I, music? you know, if I had to come back to this planet and tell people that didn't get it, like what I did, I would say I was a soul singer. I think your genre would be the best in the motherfucking world. And that. I feel like and if that. you had to make up a genre, it would just be the best. You know what? Soul encompasses so many things because nothing moves or shakes until we do it. Mm. And so once we decide that that's what it is, that's what it becomes. We move the culture at every level, yeah. starting almost with music. So soul to me is such an umbrella for so many things. It's so funny to see people be territorial with country music. That's our shit. Yep. With blues, with rock and roll, all of that is our shit. It's all, you know, made in the fields. You made, know what I mean? Made in the fields, yeah. So it's it's interesting to me, soul is an umbrella for so many things. Anything to me. All right, but so moving back to, I had a point, whatever. Moving <laughs> back, to, I, this is such a fun conversation. We I just, lost we're where I was going. Talking. We're just talking, just shooting the shit. Yeah. Moving back into the music realm. Singers now, in my opinion, have less, like, uh, the signature vocal runs. Mm. And I know you heard the conversation, you might have heard it, the conversation surrounding the the what happened to Nehu? The Nehu that Yeah, where did it go? <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> That's it. It was oh. a thing for a little while. They were talking about how singers like like how that got passed from Johnny Gill to Boys to Men mm -hmm. to and like there there have been other like famous kind of vocal riffs. I call them codas. I don't mm -hmm. think that's the right thing to call them. I mean I would just call them signatures. Signatures, yes. There are other signatures that have been kind of like like Cisco used to have one, Jodeci kind of. What was Cisco's one. signature? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were hearing but yeah, uh, Cisco, Cisco on the record. Mm -hmm. It's like a rap ad lib. Or a Jodeci. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't really happen that much anymore. Well. Is it like oral tradition not being passed down? I'm asking you because you are. I mean, what you're talking about is a group of singers that are probably originated in a place where they were making a joyful noise. Mm. And there's not a lot of uh, interaction with that as much as there was. I'm not saying that there aren't, there are some great singers. Yeah. But a lot of particularly black singers kind of start in some sort of praise and worship or church yes. situation where there are calls and answers and all of this still goes back to the fields like yep. everything happened in the fields so there's all kinds of ways that there's you know the the call and response and that isn't happening right now there's kind of um you know between the ai of it and the people seeming like ai and the plants and all of that there's not a lot of I'm making a noise that I need a, I need you to feed back to right. me. There's not a lot of that happening right now. That's that's a good answer and that's that, that's kind of what my mind was thinking. Yeah. But I just had to get it from you because yeah. you know, I feel like you you that's have really all That's really interesting the the vocal signatures though. Yeah, I mean like cuz again like I'm not I'm I'm in no way saying that the the quality of the singers have mm -hmm. like it's, it's some amazing talented Absolutely. artists. But I feel like just that that oh there goes Cisco on the track or mm -hmm. like it just kind of doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it's, um, we live in a kind of a homogenized society too. Like where this one wants to sound like this one, wants to sound like this one, wants yeah. to sound like this one. So the ones that are good really stick out. And you don't have a, a vocal signature. You just are vocal. You I just have, are. I, I have many vocal signatures. I think. Um, uh, the only w was I'm not gonna ask you to sing. I'm gonna ask. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I do want to know what your vocal signature is. I probably have well, many. The, I think my tone is part of my signature. It is. I think um, 
the low notes are a signature because, yep. you know, um, I think the singing of multiple tones is a signature. Um, yeah, because, again, like, those those three things are specific. Like, when I was, you know, whenever I hear a song and you're on, I'm like, oh, that's Layla. You know it immediately? Yeah. That's good. I mean, so when I heard your first single, I don't mean to keep going back to your first song. That's okay. I just love it that much. But when I heard it, I remember thinking it was, Angela Wimbush for some reason? Which one? Baby Don't Cry? Baby Don't Cry. It was Angela Wimbush. She produced that record and wrote it. Holy Good job. What? Good job. This is, my man called me an idiot savant earlier. <laughs> 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 but I literally had no idea that She's Angela Wimbush. She's singing on it. She is in the background vocals. Holy And on that record, I'm standing in the room and she's standing with the paper and I'm reading the lyrics. That's the vocal you got. I might have to leave my own interview now. I mean, the credits is all in there. I the never book. looked at the credits. It's hard. The, the credits <laughs> used to mean something. You know, I just, they did used to mean the something. The credits used to mean something. They, yeah, that's Angela Wimbush. She also wrote, um, I Gotta Move On. She wrote that song, too. Really? Mm-hmm. Holy Wimbush is a bad girl, and she doesn't get what she deserves. Absolutely doesn't. So before there was Alicia Keys and Tina Marie and all those people, there's Angela Wimbush. And if you go back, I mean, there's a chunk of the Isley's catalog that she's responsible for. That makes sense. Yeah. She's that a makes writer, a lot of sense. she's a player, she's a producer. She's excellent. And she only, in my mind, she only gets credit as a voice. Yeah. Which is wild. She only fun. gets credit as a voice that's a part of Renee and Angela. Yes. She has her own full career. Yeah. And she's still out on the road. She's also an excellent human being. Excellent. She's also Big Me. She, uh, we, that, she's one of the big thousand. Absolutely. Big Me is the, is the there's no big three in singing. There's Big yeah. Me. All right, so you've done tributes for everybody from Frankie Beverly to Anita Baker to your father. Yeah. If, is there any rapper you could do a tribute to? Like, would you be able to like rap somebody's catalog? Is there like a rap? It, that I could, you want me to rap? I don't want you to rap now unless you, you want to rap. Want, you don't want that. But I'm saying like in general. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Get some of them Layla bars. You know. Layla rap away, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not a girl, I got, I only got two raps I can even do all the way through. And I can't even really do them all the way through. What, well not, not, okay, so I'm not gonna ask you to rap, but. It's so bad. There's nobody up there were like, salt and pepper, we wanna come spit a pepper verse? No, said not no. really. Okay. I'm, not a, um, right. I'm not a good talker. Like I can sit here and have a conversation with you, but if I get on a stage, this is why my scatting has advanced to where it is. Cause sometimes I just don't have words. They're, yeah. not, they're not falling out of my mouth in the proper way. And so I am creating my own language by which to communicate. So that if you ask me to do like, you know, don't be cruel, I got you all day. Okay. But I am from the school of rap where you could hear all the words and yeah. understand what they so were. So that makes me want to ask you about mumble rap. Is mumble rap scatting? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. What is mumble rap? Mumble rap is the... Name an artist, do I know? Why am I blanking on those? Who? Who? I don't know who he said. Young Thug. Young Thug, but don't she don't know, know who Young I, Thug is. I know who Young Thug is so, so Mumble, in terms of fashion, but I don't yeah. know any of the songs. The, the, the words are just kind of like implied. It's mm. like really, it's like, it's like almost like, you know how sometimes artists go in the studio to figure out the words, like they'll freestyle a verse. Yes. And they'll like leave a, a reference with just like the cadence and with like with the, the syllables. With the consonants and some yeah. of the vowels. And they, Mumble rappers, they just leave that. That's the whole song. God bless everyone, <laughs> but I, I need to understand what you're saying. I, f I, I personally, you know, and it, yeah. I feel like it's so old school. Like I don't, I do not begrudge anybody's path in the music industry. Yeah, yeah. It's a horrible industry. And if you are able to make it and feed your family, beautiful. I, on the other hand, would like to have melody, harmony, and rhythm all at the same time. I would like to have all three of those things, <laughs> like a song. So if I can't understand what you're saying, I can't, um, I don't really I understand. Feel that. If, you're, if you're speaking nonsense and it's like a chant, if you're just saying, hey, uh, I can, I'm with that. That was kind of fire. But thanks, that's what I do, that's what I do. So that was a good answer, that was a good answer. That was a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got like two more questions, not many. Okay. Um, you play piano as well, mm -hmm. and you play piano as well. I sure do. <laughs> and 
while there is some footage of you playing piano uh -huh. online, there's not much. I was just wondering, like, what role does piano play in your songwriting or your process? It, it plays a huge role in my songwriting process. It doesn't play a huge role in my out live process because I'm so self-conscious about it. It's one of those things like the imposter syndrome thing. Mm. And my mother is on me all the time. Like, practice your piano. Mama, she, she hitting you with that Rhapsody she, tone. She knows. And, and we just got a B3 at our house, and my mom will play it occasionally. So I'm, I'm sort of in the, I'm still living out of a suitcase in a way since mm. COVID. And I'm working on a place where I'm going to be living in all my gear and all my little pieces of gear that are paperweights and going on the wall will fancy. be there. Yeah, <laughs> the fancy, fancy four tracks. <laughs> and so I will be able to practice a little bit, but that's how I write is generally like with a Rhodes or with a piano or someone will send me a track and I'll be able to fashion a melody. But I'm, I'm really interested in being able to play and sing for people because I think there's such a bomb in that when people see, it's like, it's like knitting a sweater for someone. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's handmade art for people. So sometimes I play and sing, um, like as an encore, if it's really special, you know, if I feel like, okay, I can do it tonight. But it's very, it's a hard thing for me to do. It is like knitting a sweater. Like I, the one thing I've always wanted to do is be able to like sit down on the piano and just play one song yeah. and sing along like a, like a party trick. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think I'll work on it and then you work on yes, it. Yes, I will. And whoever gets to the finish, well, you're already there. But. Yeah. <laughs> I'll work on it. Uh, another question. It's more of a question of advice. Uh -huh. Advice for someone who's trying to learn piano mm. or get back into playing piano. What's Practice. your advice for a person for someone who wants to like? You have to do it. Just do it. You have to do it. You gotta and do I'm, it. I'm saying that to my own self. That was a tricky way of me giving. I saw what you did there. <laughs> I saw what you did. You got to do it. You yeah. have to do it, and you have to be unafraid to fail at it. It's the first time I really decided I wanted to, when I decided I wanted to go to Berkeley, I told my mother, I want to go to Berkeley. I don't want to study classical music. I want to study jazz. And my mother said, oh, I don't know now. They, jazz is serious. You can't play with that. And I took that very seriously. When I got into Berkeley, I met a teacher. His name is Walter Beasley. He's a brilliant saxophone player and musician, singer. I said, I want to scat. I like, I want to sing jazz. I want to scat but I don't know what to say and I get tripped up over my words. He said, well, honestly, you're gonna fuck up. Mm. But then you'll find your way. And I didn't believe it and I kept messing up and I kept, you know, for someone that has as much control over my instrument as I do, to put it out there and not have it be what I'm thinking it's supposed to be was hard. But it was a lesson that I learned in letting go. So yeah. it's, the same, it's the same lesson. You have to be not afraid to fail. Layla, thank you so much thank for sitting. Thank you. Yeah. High five. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it. Once again, big ups to Layla Hathaway for gracing the lunch table with her presence. There was so much more that we didn't get to include in this episode that we'll probably end up dropping some bonus content from the interview very shortly. In the meantime, make sure to check out Vanna Black, her phenomenal new album that features Fonte, Common, Rhapsody, and many more. And that's it for this week. But you should already know by now to stick around for a little bonus content after the credits. The Almanac of Rap was created, hosted, and written by me, Don Will. The show's executive producers are Don Will and Aisha Sase. The show was produced and directed by Travis Harris. Hassan Spruill is the assistant producer. The show was edited by Kabana Bafour. The camera operators are Travis Harris, Kaushik Kaladindi, Melissa Bunny Elian, and Kabana Bafour. Art direction was handled by Kaushik Kaladindi. The technical director is Compton Timberwolf. Music production was handled by Von P. Brianna Harris is the production assistant. All right, you guys still there? Cool. Here's a clip of DJ Quick messing around on the piano and showing love to Luther Vandross and Donny Hathaway. Some people like Donny Hathaway, they were born music. Hey, do y'all remember Luther Vandross? This is how they used to think. That's how they was thinking. Look, look, look. F major. Major chord. Can you believe them motherfuckers? Then it was on some shit. 
<laughs> Stop me, man. I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> Look at that. Thank you Legend for show. Dog. Love to legends. Truly legendary. All right. I'll see y'all next week on the Almanac of Rap. <laughs>